good uh, afternoon yesterday's uh, session we have discussed uh, all these seven options which constitutes the part of uh, public issue process so these are the seven methods or these are the seven routes through which an organization who wants funds for various reasons can access the uh, capital markets and procure funds. And I'd also mention one of the prime differences between public issue and private placement that in case if a, if a company issues securities to more than 51 uh, people, then it becomes a public issue. But when the shares are issued selectively to entities, organizations, institutions and individuals, which does not exceed the count of 51 becomes private placement. So that's the difference between public issue and private placement. Public issue is a very uh, time consuming process. The uh, laws governing public issue is also quite uh, difficult for the organizations to meet and therefore most of the organizations as an alternative to public issue also prefer uh, also prefer silent uh, private placement. Now what is private placement? As I mentioned, it is opposite to public issue. And in this method, a company issues financial securities to a particular group of investors whose number does not exceed more than 49, which is, in other words, should be less than 50. Now, what are the uh, two types of private placements? Let's uh, go through this. The first one is called preferential allotment in preferential allotment what happens is companies privately identify interested investors who are willing to invest in its uh, projects so willing to give the most important resource capital for various uh, business purposes can be expansion can be repayment of existing loans, can be starting of a new project. So this is what happens in case of uh, preferential allotment. So preferential allotment, some of the uh, institutions who buy the shares from the company includes your venture capitalist, and it also includes uh, shareholders like promoters who buy the uh, shares from the uh, company. So the other option of private placement is called qualified institutional placement. Now the difference between preferential allotment and qualified institutional placement is that who are the subscribers of securities? Now in case of preferential allotment by and large, the shares are subscribed by individuals the shares are subscribed by venture capitalists, but in case of qualified institutional placement, the shares are subscribed or purchased by qualified institutional buyers. Now, according to SEBI, who are these qualified institutional buyers? The answer is it includes public financial institution. It includes scheduled commercial banks, mutual fund companies, pension fund companies, provident fund companies, foreign institutional investors and insurance companies. So all these institutions put together, we say they are qualified institutional buyers. Now you might ask why are these qualified institutional buyers subscribing for a particular company share? The answer is because they have a lot of money which is meant for investing. For example, if you take an insurance company, the premiums which is collected by insurance company runs in crores. So what do these insurance companies do with the premiums? The answer is they also invest that premiums in various uh, private placements. 
so insurance uh, companies uh insurance companies right the amount of uh, premium what they collect similarly pension fund companies the subscription amount what they collect gets channelized in a uh, private placement right and you know shares have all the potential to generate very high returns right one of the reason why people do invest in shares is that they expect capital appreciation in simple language they want their money to grow and that's perhaps why shares are quite popular so even qualified institutional buyers also take part uh, in the process of buying shares not only from stock markets but also in primary market through private placements right now let's discuss some of the uh, examples of uh, uh, preferential allotment but this preferential allotment as i mentioned in preferential allotment the buyers are not qualified institutional buyers they are basically venture capitalists and sometimes it can be an individual who is interested to buy majority stake in your organization so these are some of the examples in which individuals or in which companies have acquired strategic stakes by acquiring huge amount of uh, shares in another company uh, you are very familiar with this uh, motorcycle company which is quite popular here in india and uh, in india ktm is brought to you by bajaj bajaj has acquired uh, at the moment bajaj has more than 49% stake in this uh, austrian motorcycle company called ktm right so who has the majority uh, shares now by and large ktm has but bajaj has ex exceeded this to an extent of 49% now bajaj intends to have more than 51% now the moment bajaj acquires 51% stake in ktm it becomes the owner of this company because they will have majority voting rights so this is also a kind of a strategic uh, uh, acquisition that happens through purchase of majority uh, shares right so at the time of issuing shares also a company can buy majority shares right so uh, this is also a means through which an organization can obtain the funds which is required the reason why ktm has sold majority of the stake to bajaj because ktm is in need of money ktm is in need of capital right a similar kind of transaction uh, also happened between jet airways which is uh, a struggling airline in india struggling to survive so jet airways uh, stake was purchased by uh, another middle eastern uh, airline company called etihad airline which unfortunately did not do well after etihad bought the stake of 24% also jet uh, airways could not uh, cope up with the losses and ultimately it had to shut down its operations so this is also a kind of uh, uh, preferential allotment in which what happens the companies one company acquires huge amount of shares in another company right but it does not becomes the owner not to that extent that it becomes the owner right so as i mentioned most of the companies prefer maintaining that uh, limit of 51% because 51% of limit if you don't have then you lose ownership uh, then you lose the uh, ownership in your own company so companies don't prefer that companies don't prefer uh, losing the uh, ownership and therefore they ensure that the shares what they sell in private placement by and large should not exceed 51% so this is what a uh, preferential allotment is all about right so let me repeat in preferential allotment uh, in private placement in private placement what happens is companies rather than selling the shares to public prefer selling it to few selected institutions and individuals and as per sevi guideline that number should not exceed 49 and in case of public issue the number should exceed 51 right only then it is called a public issue less than that again we say private placement so in private placement there are two categories the first one is called preferential allotment in which an organization sells its shares to few selected individuals or can be for venture capital and in case and in case of uh, uh the other option which is qualified institutional placement 
the shares are sold to qualified institutional buyers, which primarily includes your financial institutions, public uh, financial institution, non-banking financial corporations, banks, pension fund companies, mutual fund companies, provident fund companies. These are the kind of financial institutions who buy the shares under private placement. Uh, under the category qualified institutional placement. Another option is also to allot the shares to employees. So make the employee shareholders rather than uh, issuing the shares to the public. So that option is also available, right? Now let's quickly uh, scrutinize uh, the pros and cons of uh, both public issue and private placement. Uh, which one do you think is uh, more beneficial? So let's weigh them in terms of what are the advantages of going public. So first, what are the benefits of going public? Advantage number one, a company gets to meet its objective. A company gets to uh, meet its endeavors. A company gets to meet its goal. In order to achieve all the goals, a company needs continuous flow of funds. And that is what... Uh, public issue does. It gives you the most important resource, capital. So acquisition of capital uh, is possible and quite convenient and easily can be obtained through public issue, right? And any amount of fund can be uh, acquired. So that's the beauty of public issue. Unlike the limitation what you find in a bank loan, that limitation can be overcome here. A bank may not able to give you 500 crores, 700 crores because that amount for bank is also quite huge, right? So therefore you have to borrow from multiple bank, end up paying a lot of interest, which can be avoided in case of public issue, because here you're borrowing a huge amount of money also becomes quite easier because you're not borrowing from one or two people. You're borrowing this from lakhs of investors, right? So that becomes quite easier, acquisition of capital. Point number two, optimizes cost of capital, and that is what the principle of uh, financial management also says that any organization, if it wants to have a perfect capital structure, what is a perfect capital structure? There's no word called perfect capital structure in finance, but we rather have the word optimum uh, capital structure or optimal capital structure. An optimal capital structure combines sources of funds which has lower cost and lower risk. And that is perhaps what public issue does. It gives you the optimal capital structure because in case of shares, payment of dividend is not compulsory. So there is no fixed obligation at all. So there is no cost at all to the company. The only cost is the flotation cost, expenses incurred in procuring the funds. But once the funds are procured, there is no servicing cost. Unlike debentures, you have to pay fixed interest periodically. In case of bank loans, you have to pay fixed interest periodically. But this can be totally avoided in case of shares because here, right, you don't have to pay dividend. So that optimizes the cost as well. So there is no fixed servicing cost. You only have flotation cost. Flotation cost is nothing but all the expenses incurred in procuring the funds. Third, it increases the goodwill. Now the question is how? The answer is once your pub, once your company hits the stock market, the public is much more aware of your organization than what it used to. Right now you are listed on the stock exchange. Your performance is discussed in the media. Your performance is discussed by various stock market experts, brokerage houses, newspapers, various media houses on social media. So obviously this will enhance your goodwill provided your performance should also be good. But nevertheless, you're in the news, right? People talk about your organization, which might not be possible if you're a private company. Right. So that's the beauty of going public that you are now being recognized. You're now being noticed by the public. Wealth maximization, which is the ultimate goal of financial management, is to increase the wealth of shareholders, not just in increasing the profits, but increasing the wealth of shareholders. Now, the question is, how do you increase the wealth of shareholders? And the answer to this question is wealth of shareholders increases when the price of the stock in the stock market rises. So if I buy a share today, I, we were talking about Dixon Technologies that primarily is an original equipment manufacturer or also known as OEM. 
that manufactures television sets for various big brands like LG, Samsung, Motorola and Nokia in India. And I was telling you that in the year 2017, the share was uh, sold for 2,900 rupees, but now it is trading at 14,000 rupees. So had I purchased at least one, one lakh shares of that company, today I would have become a multi-millionaire, right? So that is the beauty of a uh, uh, public issue that an ordinary person, right? An ordinary individual also gets an opportunity to grow up the economic ladder. And this purely happens if the stocks perform very well on the stock market. It automatically enhances the wealth of the investors. As the stock price escalates, increases, wealth of the investors will also grow. So in the point here is that a public, a common man also gets to take part in the growth of the company and he also gets to make nice money. Uh, employee uh, ownership. Now, what is this uh, employee uh, ownership? What is the connection with employee ownership and uh, public issue? Companies uh, also issues shares to their employees through employee stock options plan. And see, when you're an employee, you're an ex not not all kinds of employees do get shares. Only the executive employees who are in the top level who are taking strategic decisions, they are also given shares as incentives. Now, when you're given shares and intensives, they will work harder, right? The reason why they work harder is because these shares are listed on the stock exchanges. And these employees, as I mentioned, they are executives employees. They are responsible for taking strategic decisions for the growth and progress of the companies. So their decisions will definitely earn fruits not only for the company, but also for themselves. The reason is they are also owner of the company because they have also been given shares. So it works very well. So employees, uh, especially the top executive management shows a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, intent to ensure that the company's uh, performance is enhanced in all means. Uh, pricing and valuations becomes quite easier, especially whenever there is a merger or a demerger or an acquisition or a strategic takeover. In simple words, if one company is taking over another company or if one company is buying another company, how do you do the valuation? For example, let's say uh, a couple of uh, years back, uh, UTV, uh, you have heard of UTV, which is an Indian company, was taken over by Disney. So Disney took UTV, took over UTV, and UTV is a listed company on stock exchange. So if I'm buying UTV, how do I uh, evaluate what is the worth of UTV? In other words, how do I come to a conclusion? How much do I have to pay to UTV to buy it? Right. Imagine same thing happened a couple of uh, decades back when Coca-Cola purchased the iconic brands of uh, Parley Agro Foods, Limca, Maza, Thumbs Up. All these were not brands. All these are not brands of Coca-Cola. These are brands of uh, Parley Agro Foods. So it bought all these brands. So how do I determine the value? What is the worth of the company which I'm going to buy? How do we come to conclusion, right? Uh, Walmart uh, taking over Flipkart. So how did Walmart come to a conclusion that Flipkart is worth uh, $16 billion? On what basis the valuation is done? In case of Flipkart and uh, Walmart, the valuation becomes quite difficult for the experts to do for a simple reason that Flipkart is not listed on the stock market. But in case if a company is listed on the stock market, the basis of valuation, the basis of figuring out what is the worth of the company is based on the value of shares in the stock market. So that's quite simple. So UTV shares, UTV was bought by Disney and Disney decided to pay a certain amount based on the value of the shares that were traded at that time when Disney had take over, when Disney took over the company. Right. So valuation becomes quite easier. Right. So how the valuation happens? Simple. If I'm taking over UTV, let's say what is the share price today? Let's say each share is trading at 100 rupees. So how many shares uh, UTV has issued? 
so current market price into number of shares issued by UTV. That is as simple as that. So when I total this, that will be the worth of UTV. So I'll pay that and I'll acquire UTV. So this becomes quite easier if you're a public company, but if you're a private company like Flipkart, the deal was done internally, the valuations becomes quite complex, right? But here in case of a public company, the valuations are quite easy because you have the price which is being traded in the stock market. And liquidity, anytime you can exit your investment by selling your shares in the stock market. So liquidity is quite good. Liquidity is quite practical. Now, but there are certain disadvantages also of going public. One of the major disadvantage being is that you lose the confidentiality. Now, when we say you lose the confidentiality, what it means is that it becomes mandatory for a public limited company to do disclosures, right? A public limited company should disclose all its financial information and maybe some of the strategic information should also be leaked. Uh, I wouldn't say leaked, but rather revealed, right? So that's the uh, drawback of being a public company that as a public company, you have to disclose all the information to the public. So you lose the entire confidentiality. Second, regulatory pressure is too high because as a public limited company, you are under pressure to ensure that your governance is transparent and there is absolutely uh, no misappropriation of funds or there is no mismanagement. So in order to ensure that regulatory bodies like SEBI, right, uh, has ensured that companies do follow a certain protocol. And as a company, I'm under pressure to, to ensure that I follow the procedures prescribed by the regulatory bodies, which is not the case in case of a private, com private companies. Of course, they also co come under the regulatory uh, mechanism, but the pressure is not as high as what a public limited, a public limited company has to undergo. Third one, they are more accountable and accountability happens via reporting. So every year a public limited company will do uh, statutory meetings like AGM on the annual general body meeting in which the chairman or the CEO will present the performance report of the company, the progress report of the company. And the same annual report is shared with the public. The same annual report is shared with all the statutory bodies. So public will come to know, OK, fine, how the company is progressing, uh, what are the limitations? Everything will be mentioned in the annual report, both financial as well as non-financial information. That's, that's also a disadvantage because I'm accountable and this accountability comes via reporting. Loss of control happens when you issue most of the shares to public. So that is where, as I mentioned, we have been discussing this point in the preceding classes also. In fact, I had shown you some of the uh, examples on moneycontrol.com, how companies lose control. The answer is simple. If you are issuing majority shares to the public and when promoters have minimum shares or less number of shares, promoters do not have their uh, say and go. They do not have the powers to make important decisions because they do not have majority voting. Right, so that's the disadvantage of going public that the more number of shares you issue to public, you lose control in your own organization. So that's the limitation. Now, the cost is also another challenge. Uh, even though shares as an instrument does not have any fixed obligation in the form of interest, nor in the form of dividend, dividend payment is optional and at the discretion of the board of directors. If they want, they can. If they don't want to, it's their will and there is no compulsion. But another challenge in case of public issue is the flotation cost. The amount of expenses and the amount of money what you have to spend on various intermediaries, on various uh, procedures, advertisements, it's huge. The amount of money what you have to spend to get that capital is quite huge. In comparison with private placement, the amount is quite expensive. Public issue is quite expensive. Now let's move on to the uh, advantages. So this are the disadvantages of public issue in simple language becomes the advantages of private placement. So here it is less expensive because you're signing the deal with limited number of players. So you don't have to shell out a lot of money on advertisement, hiring merchant bankers, hiring underwriters, hiring uh, brokers, right? So all that can be avoided. Process is quick and convenient, and that's one of the reasons why 
companies uh, also prefer going for private placement because you don't have to go through the tedious process which is generally followed in public issue, right? <clears throat> Filling up an application, waiting for SEBI's nod, appointing merchant bankers, appointing other intermediaries, going for advertisement, printing the prospectors, all this is a hassle, which can be avoided in case of private placement. Uh, structure effectiveness in the sense that the promoters still get to have a, a majority of the shares, right? Uh, they don't lose control as such. Now, some of the uh, disadvantages of private placement is that you have limited number of investors. So sometimes rising huge amount of capital becomes quite challenging. If I need 7000 crores, then it becomes difficult even for private placement, even for few financial institution also to buy those number of shares. And generally the pricing is uh, less since the process is quick. These uh, private, uh, uh, these qualified institutional buyers have a lot of bargaining power. So up in case of public issue, there's no bargaining in the price, but here a lot of negotiation happens and you might not get the kind of price for the share what you would have got in case of public issue and short selling. So some uh, private investors, what they do is immediately immediately after buying the shares from you, they exchange hands, they sell the shares to some other a uh, qualified institutional buyer or they might uh, liquidate this in the uh, stock market right so that creates uh, a lot of uh, short selling uh, so this is this is about your uh, uh, public and uh, private placement so in case if you have any questions on what we have discussed so far uh, you can go ahead and message me on ms teams and uh, get your uh, doubts uh, clarified on the concepts what we have been discussing for the for a while you know yesterday we discussed uh, uh, public the methods of issuing shares under public issue and today we have discussed the methods of issuing shares under private placement so any doubt uh, don't hesitate go ahead and clarify your doubts anytime you can send me a message on ms teams